took them to a place called Chatsworth, which is about 30 miles away from downtown LA. Icon, the name on the wall there, and this line of dilapidated 50s and 40s American cars might give you a bit of a clue. On that side, we'll give you even more of a clue. There is a lines and lines and lines of beautiful old Toyota Land Cruisers and early Ford Broncos. I've come to a place called Icon 4x4. And this is a company I've known about for about six or seven years, set up by a chap called Jonathan Ward, really charismatic, interesting guy. And he takes classic off-roaders like the Land Cruiser and rebirths them with better than new componentry whilst retaining a classic look. It's the ultimate, the highest accolade of what they call resto modding. And these over there get the resto modding treatment. But there's a car that I saw a couple of weeks ago at a place called SEMA, huge modified car show in Vegas, the biggest in the world. And one of his cars took this place by storm and it was a 1949 Mercury, which had totally electric underpinnings. And it was one of the best executed jobs I've ever seen because the engine bay still kind of looks like a V8. Let's go and meet him. Hey, Jonathan. Jonathan. That's easy, <laughs> right? We, neither one of us can screw that up. It's Welcome. really, really good to see you. And you finally too. come here. I'm honoured. Well, I mean, I've heard about Icon because of people sort of saying, you know, you, there's nobody else doing, off, there was, or was nobody else doing off-road classic vehicles to, the, to the, the detail and the level that you were. Yeah. Or are, because yeah. you're, you're still doing it. Thank you. And, and I didn't realise how big you've got. Yeah, this it's nice. big. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Can you show me around? Yeah, let's do it. But obviously the reason why I've turned up here is because I've known about the, the, the piston cars you do yeah, yeah. and continue to do and evolve. And this is, this is your core business, isn't it, at the moment? Yeah, definitely. But I, I think the future, just as we evolved the traditional Restomod approach and, and set a higher bar for engineering and quality, yep. I also obviously am, am already yearning to evolve into the EV space. Yep. Because you know companies like Tesla have obviously proven the model and the consumer has their head around it and they already have one, but nothing compares to the the romance, the design continuity of the vintage aesthetic that is classic transportation. So, so do you have customers who say, I daily drive a Model S. Oh, heck yeah. I love it, my wife loves it, it's cool. Eh, but. But I want something that looks I like that. I want something with more personality, more yeah. history, or something that they may already have some sort of visceral, romantic relationship. That's a big cheat for Icon, if you really stop and think about it. Yeah. The original standards of industrial design and transportation were such that Companies were building things to last as long as possible. Yeah. No obsolescence it, built in. Correct. So in yeah. my humble or maybe not humble opinion, mass transportation business model today is more about the Wall Street corruption of telling shareholders they're constantly going to make more and there'll be more yield. Which means what? Design is a byproduct. Longevity, forget about it. That's actually a deficit in that sort of business model. So they transitioned from make it strong, make it last to, hey, wait a minute, look at personal electronics. People bought a laptop, the battery went dead, they threw the laptop away, they remained brand low and bought a new laptop. Hmm, that's better business. How do we yeah. learn from that industry and apply it to trends? Yeah. Which I think was you know, the beginning of the end. Yeah. So I'm trying to revive the old school industrial arts. Yeah. So whereas you know, we're putting the best modern engine, I'm still designing it so the vehicle is submodular. Okay. So I'll show you, there's like key bulkhead connections wherein I hope the vehicle is cherished and in 10 or 20 years, the new whiz bang best ice or EV or micro capacitor, whatever the hell it might can be, be, can be, boom. Yeah, put it in yep. and keep the integrity of that original platform. See, so I love the engine there, it's great. Yeah, you know, I appreciate V8s. Tell me how you got from the point of these things to suddenly going, maybe we should do a build with EV power. Well, I'm just that geek, right? I'm constantly wanting to like evolve and move forward and keep watching new tech and new solutions. And when we started, what was there? There was a Prius and like, I'm not going to adapt the Prius. They're like, I hate Priuses personally. You're just so soulless and you're so disconnected. So that wasn't even yeah. on the radar, right? Yeah. But then over the years, Tesla, 
most. I mean, we can credit other companies, but if we really think it through, Tesla proved the model. Yeah. The consumers adopted, evolved, cherished, and they created this, this valuable tribe that enabled now, right, all the other OEMs and people to come into the space, oh, yeah. and geeks like me and all the retrofit EV communities. So very quickly, I was like, hmm, we should start playing with that. Because yeah. I also was responding to customers who more and more would call and say, hey, that's cool, I love that. But you know what, I have a Tesla, my wife has a Tesla, whatever, I love it. But I'm still yearning for that visceral connection that, yeah. that only a classic can give me. So can you do that? So you were getting more and more inquiries. Definitely. That. Okay. I mean, it's it's exponentially growing. It's it's become a hockey puck growth of interest, probably due to the visibility of the Merc that we released. And I want to do Tesla supercharged compatibility chat 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 mo. I'm chat mo. Yeah. All your chat lingo and acronyms. Which is the yeah, Nissan Leaf kind yeah. of the chat mo thing. So like we want so. quick charge. We want reasonable range. We want copious power. So yeah. if your game, Mr. Client, whoa, we're so game. Yeah. And we know we wanted to work with Matt Hobber. He's a brilliant engineer. We have mechanical engineering and electrical engineering yeah. on staff in house. We have tons of crazy resources and relationships, so we felt we were in a position yeah. to push that forward. Oh, look at it. So this car yeah. uh, is original untouched body. Yes. It has a, a completely new bespoke chassis. Yeah. With suspension, with brakes, uh, yeah. and everything else. And obviously the thing that I've seen and, and watched and read about, which is why I'm here, is what's going on under the bonnet. Yeah, let me show you. So, ta-da. Oh, look at this. I designed this to, at first glance, still evoke that classic V8, that classic speed equipment, SoCal hot rodding vibe. Tons of machining and polishing hours, yeah. totally unnecessary, yeah. but so much fun. <laughs> and then within this array, this V structure, yeah. is actually the Reinhardt controllers, which we repackaged, and then many of the Tesla P85 battery arrays. So you've got a V of correct. The, this 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 plastic um, is it nah, plastic? Nah, hell is no, it? I hate plastic. So that's no, all that? 60, 61 um, aluminum. Alu aluminum. <laughs> I can't say it the way. You say your way. Aluminum. Alu no, yours is Al fine. Aluminium. Aluminium. <laughs> I knew that the derelict things were amazing anyway, and when I saw the pictures of this, I thought, hang on a minute, you've just told me it's electric. You pop the bonnet. But it just looks like a classic V8. Yeah, I with the to fit, keep, with keep the cooling fins yeah. and the rocket covers. Even the, the plus or minus radiator, which obviously now is part of the hot, cool, thermally managed network for the Tesla arrays. Right. And then the the AMR American Racing, the AMR American Racing dual motors are also thermally managed, which is killer. Yeah. And then we have coolers and fans and umpteen gizmos hidden throughout the vehicle. Independent rear suspension setup. Independent, okay. Yep, front is independent as well. Yeah. Ridiculous six piston oversized Brembo's all the way around. Yeah. Rack and pinion steering that in this case is electric. Yeah. All hand built 12 volt network from scratch, as well as obviously all the high voltage goodness, etc. And then, uh, yeah, there's so like, nice. The line is here. Yeah. So from here in, all these inner fender structures yeah. are all hand built in house because obviously the new paradigm of functionality needed is entirely different. And then I'll show you underneath the vehicle is totally not what you'd expect from the exterior. So how, how, what's the performance of this car? Well, we're you, still you finishing it up, you know, yeah. so we had to rush it to SEMA to get all the accolades and be show offs. Yeah. But we're in the last 30 day stretch of our final design for thermal management networking, the pumps, for example, that we originally used, yep. on paper were appropriately rated, but in reality, thank you, Bosch, we're not. So we went back to using the Tesla proven pumps in the system. And then for charging's kind of fun. I didn't want some big tech connector visible. No, because they are quite ugly. Oh, they're hideous, oh, they, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I've been tempted to machine them, but I haven't gone there. So hiding here in front. Is your Chadamo connector. Is Mr. Chadamo. Brilliant. Kind Ch of boring. Ch Chad Emo, lovely guy. And then in the back, uh, under the original gas cap lid, is where we put the municipally compliant charger. 
That does not look like a charger. Well, I had some fun again and machined it and did some un you, unnecessary goodness. You artistic <laughs> swine. So that's your type one, that's your type one connector, isn't it? Correct. That, yes. And then uh, in the trunk, you see some of the tech, although we built in all these enclosures that are vented. Uh, none of these are speakers. All of these are venting for the various systems. Okay. And then behind this, you have a vertical array. Of batteries. Of batteries. Yes. Yep. And then under here, which I should just take it in the air and show you underneath. This is a removable panel for serviceability and where the original gas tank was. Of course. Are more batteries. Yeah. And then there are two more midship. And we're trying to keep that weight distribution yeah. Good. And the, the P85 is, what was it, 16 batteries in total, I think we've shoved in here? Wow. 16 or 18, whatever the heck was in the P85. Okay. We want to do P100, yeah. but A, can't find one. You've got to wait for someone to... Different. Someone's yeah. going to wrap one around a pole yeah. in ludicrous <laughs> mode. You know it's going to happen. This is the thing I'm seeing about. waiting on that. The whole retro EV community is basically wishing people to put their Teslas yeah, backwards through it. hedges. We used to <laughs> hope they'd crash their Hellcat. You know, now yeah. we move straight on. But, yeah. you know, their crazy thing is the resale of, like, a massively totaled P100. Yeah. They're selling for at junkyards, like, beyond repair, like, blood splatter, horrible... They're like 60, 70 grand. Wow. Because of the drivetrain. Yeah. Everyone because people it like, like us. Yeah, they want the cells, they want the drivetrain. Yep. Wow. Let me lift it up and show you underneath because it's Can you? pretty nuts. How nice is this? took uh, almost two years and we still have another 30 days to go from okay. inception to completion. So you're, this is this is almost, it's on the final home straight before yes. it gets given to the customer. Correct. But first and foremost, we have to trust it and learn from it and prove it to ourselves before we go prove it into the world. Yeah. You're the first guy actually that I've accepted a media sort of in-depth walk around because of your intelligence in this space. Well, I, I think you'd be that. more forgiving. Although I'm bummed uh, all the plumbing's apart. So we, we can't, can't drive, drive it today. But take a take a wee peek. It's potentially a really good everyday yeah, car. Yeah, that's my goal. And yeah. the client lives in Arizona. Okay. So massive cold, although I guess a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. It gets nasty hot and it gets pretty nasty cold. So that again was why we're like, okay, we're wanting to do a proper hot and cold thermal management system. Yeah. So does it, this uses all of the modules from a, a P85? Yep, every last so. one of them. Every single yeah. one. Okay. And then this absurd drive shaft. So this is a carbon Kevlar drive shaft. It's just absurd wow. to handle That's massive. this output. Yeah, it's, it's pretty stupid. That's a lorry. Yeah. This show, so this chassis was des designed by you guys? Very specifically for the kind of output that we're dealing with. Wow. And then the primary chassis rails are 180 wall US DOM steel, mandrel bent, no fillet cuts, and then uh, fish oil on the inside for preservation, like a dry dock is to control rust inside. Yeah, yeah. Then capped, then epoxy powder coat primed, and then military spec one powder coated. Oh and all goodness. beautiful man-made welds, no grinding, everything's honest and visible. It looks spectacular. And then the AMR dual motors. Wow. Which, as you probably know, they're really the Remy motors. Yeah. AMR does beautiful, sexy packaging and anodizing. Wow. Then the electric rack and pinion from Unisteer, which we're very happy with. That goes to a modern safety style breakaway tilt steering column okay. for better ergonomics. And safety. Better safety, yeah. Most accident problems with vintage cars have been the fact that the human form gets impaled by the color. By the steering column. Yeah. So that's the javelin effect. Always, always change. Yeah. Side impact protection and stuff is way better than any modern tissue paper car. It's just burly as all hell by nature. Yeah. But that is a key thing. Obviously, rack and pinion weight distribution, yeah. braking performance, et cetera. So we're very conscious of that. That's a big part of evolving such vehicles properly. No one knows. No. This the is industrial the art that is hiding under. I yeah. actually shed a tear when we put the body on the chassis. Because the chassis are just these mechanical sculptures, yeah. you know? They, that, 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 this is sculpture. Yeah. I mean, like you say, this, this could drive past you on the, on the, on, 
you know, yeah, you in, in downtown, you. and I'd go, that looks cool. Yeah. I have no idea yeah. what's going on. Or better yet, see it in a field and just figure it hasn't driven for 30 years. <laughs> yeah. But I talk too much. Let's shut up and drive. Why don't we take the V-Dub out for a while? I was going to ask you, Let's can do we it. do that? Sure. It's on the button, is it? Yep. I haven't driven one of these in ages. Well, it'll come back to you like riding a bike. I've never driven a, a VW 181 uh, thing before. I've seen them. I know people that have them. They're cool. They are. They're like, they're like an erector's set. They're like Legos. It's just yeah. billions of little pieces. You can take the hard top off on, put the soft top on. You can take the top off and the doors off. You can fold the rear seat flat. You can take everything. What, is this got a, the same kind of motor as the Mercury? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, no, same manufacturers, yeah. but the smaller version. Okay. And then going through the stock transaxle reinforced much stronger version of that. Yeah. And then we upgraded brakes and suspension. Uh, these wheels are kind of groovy. They're like an early V-dub Porsche thing from the Japanese market. They're Speedmasters. Yeah. I noticed cool. them. Yeah. yeah they're so great we powder ones. coated them black to just kind of keep yeah. them chill. And then the client, despite our urging, chose these tires for style, and I'm totally with them. Yeah. They're not as efficient as they could be. Yeah. Meaning for EV efficiency, we could have gone with a much lower rolling resistance Resi Yeah, solution. you can feel the resistance. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but they're cool. They Does get you, regenerative do, braking. That's part of what you're feeling as I've, well. I've noticed the regen. Yeah. Yeah, I get a bit of, yeah, get get a bit of regen. regen. So this is the perfect kind of spec for someone that wants like a, the classic look, potentially a daily driver, a bit of range as well, 80 to 100 mile range? Oh, uh, no, this one's about a buck 20. Is it? OK. Yeah. This so, is so relaxing. Well, let's, let's wake it up a little along. bit. When we turn right here, put your right foot more into it. And if we're if there's not traffic and you can, then you can progress into third and get a feel for its range. If we really wanted to be silly, we could have burned out in first, but we didn't. <laughs> but it's fun. It's got so the power. I can just... Keep revving, keep revving, keep okay. going. Go, 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 yep. go, 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 go. Now you might want to hit third. Don't even ride the clutch, you're right back out of it. Feel yeah. the pump, it keeps you in that torque spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that party's on all the way to top gear. I would love to come back again. I think, I think after, hopefully after watching this show, I think fully charged viewers will say, right, whatever he's doing next, I want a part of it. Sweet. Well, we will be it. flattered and we will welcome your return. They say the ultimate recycling is reusing old cars. And that's basically what's happening to Icon. You take something like this and you rebuild it to be good for another 20, 30 years. And even better, maybe you'll EV it. That's very cool, isn't it? Thanks very much for watching Fully Charged. If you've already subscribed, thank you very much. If you haven't, click subscribe, which will be somewhere on the screen, somewhere. If you're a Patreon and you've supported Patreon, thank you so much. We could not make these episodes and come to places like this without you. If you don't know what Patreon is, click the link. It's somewhere on the screen. And have a look what Patreon subscription means. I'm Johnny Smith. Thanks for watching. See you next time. And don't forget to get your tickets for Fully Charged Live USA in Austin, Texas on the 1st and 2nd of February 2020 while you still can. A cornucopia for EVs and sustainable energy. Tickets are available on the fullycharged.show website. Click the on-screen icon or in the show notes to head straight there.